Chirk Amateur Athletic Association Football Club have won just one game all season in Wales's second division, which is the 183rd best league in Europe. So arguably, they are the worst team in the UK in Football Manager. So I'm taking over the club and I've been given three challenges. Win at the Welsh Premier League, qualify for the league phase of a European competition, and then work our way towards winning any European trophy. So we might be here for quite some time. Now I would introduce you to the team, but for some reason we have 45 first team players. The pick of the bunch is ball winning midfielder Ryan Dean, but as you can see, he's not exactly Rodri. So my first act as manager was to get rid of half the squad who were on amateur contracts. Those who survived were moulded into a simple 4-4-2, where the idea is we give the ball to Ryan Dean and hope he performs some sort of miracle. That's because we are predicted to finish rock bottom of the table. So our goal in season one is to just not get relegated. We kicked off the season at home against Buckley and we started on the front foot with our first chance coming within 120 seconds, but we just couldn't manage to get the ball in the back of the net. However, not long after, the first goal of the video was scored for Buckley as they headed home from a corner. But we didn't let our heads drop and we kept pushing. I do like the look of this Ryan Dean. I'd made him captain before the game and he was leading us back to level terms with a wonderful effort from distance which spurred on the team. So much so, striker James Smallwood won the ball on halfway, sprinted towards the penalty area and despite pressure from numerous defenders, managed to put the ball past the keeper to give us the lead. Then in the second half, our other striker Reese Edwards wanted in on the action too receiving a ball over the top from Ryan Dean and putting it past the keeper to extend our lead. Now Buckley did score a second goal late on as our defense's tied legs just gave up, but they also brought down one of our players in the penalty area with 20 seconds to go and Niall Freeman happily scored to win us the match on the opening day. Already we've won as many games as Chirk have in real life. The winning continued as we beat a team called Mold Alex 2-1 and then our third win of the season came against Landidlows. I don't know how we are predicted to finish bottom of the table because we are so good. Well, that was until the losing started and the reality set in. But halfway through the season, we are nine points ahead of the relegation zone. And as long as we don't go down, that for me is a success. But we just couldn't get back to winning ways and suffered big defeats to Hollywell. Ruthin beat us 3-1 at home and we conceded in the 86th minute to lose 5-4 against Flint Town. So with four games to go, we were hovering two points above the relegation zone. At home against Landudno, we ended up losing 1-0, which is not what we needed. However, we did take the lead against Landidlows, but we then bottled that lead and conceded two goals before half time. But in the 94th minute, we rescued a point by scoring a last gasp penalty and that kept us two points ahead of the relegation zone. But then we lost 5-0, which put us right on the edge once again. So we finished the season against Buckley, who we started the season against. And we always finish, as we started, with a win. A 3-1 victory was enough to take us away from the relegation zone, keeping us in the league and completing our season one challenge. The bright spark was our strike force. If we can get both of them over 20 goals next season, we might be able to start a push towards the top of the table, especially if we can get some of our best youth intake players into the first team, like 16 year old giant Tom Bellis, who is going to start for us in season two. But of course we brought in plenty of new players, the pick of the bunch being tie winger Danny Hill. He also has English nationality, hence the name. So this season, we need to finish in the top half of the table. In the season opener, we got the win. Our best player, Ryan Dean, got us started before new boy Danny Hill scored on his debut thanks to a nice deflection to deliver all three points. But after that, we went on a six game run without a win to put a dent in our hopes of finishing in the top half. Eventually though, we did get back to winning ways with the big man Tom Bellis finally finding some form as he scored important goals to help us get wins. He also scored in the 96th minute to make sure we drew the game against Aberystwyth Town at home. So halfway through the season, we aren't going to trouble for the title, 
but we do need a few more wins to get ourselves into the top half. Now Tom Bellis has a taste for goals, he could not stop scoring, which was great. Especially as we're also winning plenty of games thanks to his incredible free kicks. And so we turned around our early season poor form and genuinely looked like title contenders if we sustained this level of form across the entire season. In the end, we finished in fourth place, which is way better than we thought we'd achieve. But we do have a chance of silverware. We've been fortunate in the Welsh Cup with the draw and made it all the way through to the final, where we're taking on reigning champions Aberystwyth Town, who are also in our league. But the big prize about this competition is if we win it, we get a spot in the Europa Conference League. So in front of a packed out Millennium Stadium, we're 90 minutes away from European football. But we couldn't have gotten off to a worse start. Humphreys quite clearly brought down his man in the area and the ref awarded Aberystwyth a penalty, which they buried to take the lead in the 10th minute. And 10 minutes later, they should have had a second, but somehow Woodhouse's shot went wide of the mark. So at half time, we were deservedly behind. But the game was killed off in the 80th minute. We just could not get the ball under control. Aberystwyth pumped the ball into our area and the low cross connected with their striker to double their lead. But we might just have a last gasp chance. In the 90th minute, Hill's free kick was sent wide to Williams, who put a ball in the middle for Daniel Perry to head it home, giving us a lifeline. But it was too little too late. Aberystwyth lift back-to-back -back Welsh Cup titles and will take part in the Europa Conference League next season. But we had a strong end to the season and reaching the cup final is huge, so I am very confident heading into season three. Our core front three of Bellis, Hill and Edwards are all in double figures for goal contributions this season. But maybe the board are a little bit too ambitious, as they want us to win the league title and earn promotion this season. This summer, I've put an emphasis on defence, Bradley Taylor is arguably our best player, and Joe Ashton can play in a multitude of different positions. And it was Bradley Taylor who got off to the perfect start, scoring a penalty four minutes into his debut as we won 2-1 away at Landudno. Rhys Edwards scored a late brace in a 4-0 win over Langefni, whilst Tom Bellis got his first of the season in a 3-0 win over Rill. But after going seven games unbeaten, we did start to slip up, which annoyingly means we sit five points behind Ruthin a third of the way into the season. But a few games later, we travelled to Ruthin, and we put the league leaders to the sword, taking home a 1-0 victory, which we then ruined by losing 4-0 away to Carnarvon, 3-2 at home against Landudno, and 2-0 away to Hollywell. So despite beating Ruthin, we fall to third in the table and six points behind the league leaders in the only promotion spot. So with 10 games to go, we beat Ben Bigger 2-0 thanks to Danny Hill, Porth Madog 2-0 thanks to Tom Bellis, who also scored in a 2-0 win over Hat St Mary's, and we beat a team that I couldn't possibly pronounce, 3-0. Along with two draws against Gilesfield and Banger, we've closed the gap to the top to just two points. And our next game is against Ruthin. Obviously, it was a very anticlimactic 0-0, but we did well to earn a point after Captain Ryan Dean was sent off after 34 minutes for a two-footed challenge. But we then weren't helped when we had to play 89 minutes with 10 men away at Flint Town who scored twice to beat us 2-1, making our title hopes almost evaporate. Tom Bellis did give us a lifeline with a 1-0 win over Carnarvon, but 10 minutes into our final game of the season, we gave away a penalty to Airbus UK who scored. We did pull back an equaliser, but we couldn't find a winner, meaning we finished three points behind Ruthin and miss out on promotion, failing this season's challenge. So, I'll be honest with you, I just feel let down and deflated, especially by those players who got red cards. Bro, have you just tried pulling yourself together? What? N no. Are you qualified to do this? Of course I'm not. But uh, looking at the time, that's all we've got time for this week. So I can schedule you in again for 32 weeks time. Surely there must be a better way to do therapy. Oh, there is. There's this great service called BetterHelp. BetterHelp? Yeah. 
you are doing an advert for them. First of all, you go to their website and answer a few questions about yourself. Then you get paired up with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles like yours, usually within 48 hours. Well, if it's so much easier, why aren't you doing it? Well, I'm not qualified, you see. All therapists on BetterHelp are trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone calls, video chats, or messaging. So as part of doing this advert, I have been giving BetterHelp a go, and I'm currently in the process of doing a few sessions with my therapist. I've learned that therapy isn't all about talking about a previous trauma. For example, I've been wanting to talk about my career and the worries and concerns I have about being a full-time self-employed YouTuber. And I'll be honest, it's not been easy. I'm a man, and like most men, we don't really like talking about how we feel. And given that 96% of you watching me are men, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. But BetterHelp really does feel a lot less daunting than going through other services. Especially knowing I can just type out a message rather than articulate to another person. But actually, I am getting something off my chest and there is a professional on the other end who is qualified to help. So you can check out the website and see what they're all about at betterhelp.com slash TomFM. And if you do choose to sign up, you do get 10% off your first month if you use my link down in the description. So in order to get promoted in season four, we're going to need better players across the whole pitch, including strikers. So say hello to our new front man, Ben Fawcett, who I'm hoping will lead us to promotion. He scored the fifth goal in a 5-1 win away at Airbus UK. He then grabbed a brace in a 3-0 win away at Rill and the final goal in a 4-0 win against Landudno. But we did slip up a couple of times in our opening 10 games of the season, meaning we only sit sixth in the table, albeit a very tight table. So we changed our lineup a bit, and we needed Reese Edwards back in the side. He scored in a 4 1 win against Prestatian Town and got himself a hat trick at home against Carnarfon, scoring the first with his right foot, the second with his left foot but he couldn't add a header to make a perfect hat-trick. He then picked up another brace in a 3-1 win over Rill to complete a run of nine wins in 10 games, which puts us top of the pile by two points with nine games to go, which is where we completely fell apart, picking up just six points from the next available 15, dropping us down to second in the table. Luckily, our next game was against bottom of the table, but we only just managed to win 1-0. However, our title rivals Gresford also won, so we stay a point behind them. We had to make sure we won our next game, and a penalty in the 86th minute ensured that we won it 2-1. But once again, Gresford also won. However, in our penultimate game of the season, we could only muster a draw. But Gresford lost to fourth place Carmarthen Town, meaning we go ahead of them in the table on goal difference, heading into the final game of the season. As long as we win and Gresford don't win their game by five more goals than we do, the title and promotion is ours. But we're taking on Carmarthen Town, who just beat Gresford. Somehow, we didn't take the lead seven minutes into the game. As the ball bounced around the penalty area, no one could get the decisive touch. Hill's free kick in the 34th minute went over the bar and didn't really trouble the keeper. But finally, the deadlock was broken, as Reese Edwards found a ball to the open Ben Fawcett, who fired home to give us the lead. We almost doubled it just before half-time, the free kick routine almost finding its way into the back of the net. But in added time into the first half, Hill was brought down in the penalty area. Luckily, Sean Platt sent the keeper the wrong way and we go into the half-time break 2-0 up. Grisford are also 2-0 up at the break, but as long as they don't score another five, as it stands, we'll still get promoted. But we want to get promoted in style. Some neat football on the near side of the pitch saw Clark put a ball over the top for Fawcett, who had his shot helped into the back of the net with a nice deflection. However, Carmarthen aren't going down without a fight, and in the 65th minute, found a way back into the game. But luckily for us, it was just a consolation goal. We held strong, saw the game out, topped the table, and won the title. Finally, in season four, earning promotion to the Welsh Premier League, meaning we are one step closer to completing objective number one. I told you, this was gonna take quite some time.
But the question is, will our current team be good enough to survive the top division? I don't think so. So we signed 16 new players and have set up in a new formation with a slightly adjusted tactical style to hopefully see us achieve the season challenge of avoiding relegation. I am particularly keen to see how Archie Christie Cranny gets on as our new inside forward, which is a role that feels far too fancy for the Welsh leagues. The league works slightly differently. After 22 games, it splits in two. The top six fight out for the title and the bottom six fight to avoid relegation. The top two teams are also guaranteed a European place with the team in third getting 1-2 unless the winner of the Welsh Cup finishes outside the top three. Then the teams 4th to 7th take part in a small knockout tournament to decide a fourth qualifier. However, we can't think about that just yet because this season we are predicted to get relegated. But I think the odds makers need to have a rethink. On our opening day, we welcomed Colwyn Bay to our brand new stadium and Archie Christie Cranny scored himself a hat-trick to stun our opponents in a 3-0 win. He then scored a brace against Cardiff Metropolitan University as we beat the students 4-0 at home. And then he scored less than 30 seconds into our 2-0 win over Haverford West. But after three wins on the bounce, we then lost three in a row including to the league's only professional side, the New Saints. But it's Aberystwyth Town who sit on top of the table, two points ahead of TNS and five points ahead of us. If we can stay in the top six for 11 more games, we'll be in the championship group. Now it was the turn of right winger Samuel Okoka to score. He picked up a brace in a 5-1 win over Connors Key and scored the second in our 3-0 win over Barla Town. But the surprise package was the tip of the pyramid, Callum Cook, who was racking up a surprising number of goals, even if they didn't always help us win, like in our 2-1 defeat to Barry Town. We did slip up a few more times, meaning we're not going to be in the title battle this season, but we are fighting for third place with Britain Ferry. Now the league has split into two. However, in our first five games, we only won one, which isn't ideal, but we do stay ahead of Britain Ferry on goal difference. Now, we did end up losing our next game 2-0 away from home to Aberystwyth Town as they fight for the title against the New Saints, who also ended up beating us 2-0, although this time we were the home side. Not quite sure why I made that sound so excited. That's quite bad, actually, isn't it? We then bottled the win against Penny Bonds as Kyle White had his spot kick saved by the goalkeeper. But thankfully, Archie Christie Cranny was on hand to score twice past Barry Town in our penultimate game of the season. This means we go into the final day, one point ahead of Britain Ferry, who we play against in a winner-takes-all grudge match that does have a Europa Conference League spot on the line as the league's top two teams have both made it to the Welsh Cup final. But a draw would work pretty well for us. And judging by the first half that only had one highlight, which did go in Britain Ferry's favour, the match was certainly heading towards a draw, especially as the second half was much of the same, which doesn't make for the most exciting viewing experience, but who cares? It means we finish in third place and secure ourselves in the Europa Conference League next season. However, we enter in the first of four qualifying rounds, so I highly doubt we're actually going to make it all the way through to the league phase. But TNS did actually make it this past season, so we do know it's possible. Although given how much better they are than us, I don't think we'll manage it this time around. And neither do the board, who set us a challenge of reaching the third qualifying round. So we kick off our European campaign in early pre-season against Torshaven from the Faroe Islands. We're playing in Wrexham Stadium, who are actually our closest professional club, as our new stadium isn't up to European standards. And maybe we aren't either, as the visitors struck first to open up the scores within 15 minutes. But we aren't going to give in there. Cook's corner was cleared back to him, he found Sean Platt, who picked his spot and got us back on level terms just before half-time. Buoyed by the goal, we started the second half well, getting the ball to right back Marcus Lawrence, who fancied himself for a goal, so he went and got it, giving us the lead. Of course, Christy Cranny was feeling left out, so he got on the end of a cross to head us into a two-goal lead and a 3-1 victory in our first European game. Now, we just need to avoid defeat in the Faroe Islands. However, we did lose, but only 1-0, which means we win 3-2 on aggregate and progress.
in the second qualifying round, we're up against Pushkas Academy from Hungary and ended up losing the first leg at home 2-0 to the stronger side. But in the second leg, we took the lead through new signing Carlos Mendes Gomez to give us a lifeline. And minutes later, Callum Cook scored as a second goal, putting us on level terms and heading to extra time. That was until the 91st minute, when Sean Platt tried to clear the ball off the line, but headed it into the crossbar and his own net. Meaning Pushkas win the tie 3-2 at the very last second. I feel crushed by that. But it's our first taste of European football, and now what we need to do is focus on getting there again next season. So we started off our campaign in Wales with a 3-1 win at home, but we still can't quite beat TNS. However, this season we did beat Aberystwyth Town thanks to a late penalty giving us a 2-1 win. But for every bit of good news, there's some bad news, as we ended up losing to Britain Ferry, who were of course our closest rivals last season. However, it does seem to be a low point scoring season, as we're five points ahead of TNS in fourth place as we top the table at the halfway mark. Things carried on well for us. We beat Barrytown 1-0, Newton 1-0 away from home, and then Archie Christie Cranny had a perfect game as he scored four goals in a 4-0 victory away from home against Connor Key. Seemingly, nothing could stop us. Apart from the month of December, where we just couldn't win a game. This actually means we drop behind TNS by a point when the league splits in two. But this season, we are in a title fight. Well, we were until we lost our first game 2-1 to Colwyn Bay. But Kieran Burton scored in the 95th minute to ensure we won 2-1 against Britain Ferry to get us back on track, before we derailed ourselves again with a draw against Connors Key. However, this season we managed to beat Aberystwyth Town 1-0 and secured a vital 2-1 win over the New Saints to improve on last season, giving us a 3-point lead over both of them with 5 games to go. But obviously, we totally collapsed. However, so did TNS as they only picked up 1 point, but Aberystwyth did win all 3 of their games. So this means they're only 2 points ahead of us and we play them next. But things didn't look good when they scored a penalty early on and then doubled their lead just before half time. But we never give up. 62 minutes in and Christy Cranny slotted one past the keeper. Five minutes later, Bird got on the end of a back post cross to nod it past the goalkeeper. And then in the 93rd minute, Christy Cranny was totally unmarked on the near side and had all the time in the world to pick his spot and score off the post to win us the game in the final seconds, putting us back on top of the table. So as long as we beat TNS in the final game of the season, we will be the champions. The first chance of the game came to us. However, our corner was punched away by the keeper. But recycling the ball gave us another shot, which Jack Lewis took and gave us the lead. We tried the exact same move from the other side of the pitch later on, this time it didn't quite pay off. But all of our chances were coming from corners, and this time Munro scored a thundering header to double our lead. We almost made it three just before half time, but Jack Lewis's shot hit the crossbar and went over. So at half time, we're winning and we are dominating. But the new Saints are good, and early in the second half, they pulled a goal back from a free kick. This puts us in dangerous, nervy territory, so we need another goal. And fortunately for us, Christy Cranny was on hand to deliver the goods. And just to make sure we got the win, the referee awarded us a very dubious penalty, which of course, we went on to score for a 4-1 lead. So we decided to take no risks, we protected our lead, and we saw the game out. To be crowned champions of Wales, qualifying for next season's Champions League and ticking off our first major objective. Also, now we've got that ticked off, we are going to shift our focus away from Wales and onto European football. Just in the interest of time, otherwise we will be here forever. We ended up playing Christy Cranny as a striker this past season. But other than him, we didn't actually score that many goals, which does need to change. But we now have a lot of money on our hands 
thanks to the three quarters of a million pound prize money we got from the Conference League. But the board turned down my request to go from a semi-professional club, which trains part-time, to a full-time professional club. Until that happens, I think it's going to be pretty much impossible for us to reach the league phase of a European competition. But we do have a chance to progress past the Champions League first qualifying round, as we take on Luxembourg champions Dudelange. We're hoping our new striker slash inside forward Jaden Fuller will get us all the goals we need to progress. And he opened up the scoring for us eight minutes into the game in Luxembourg which was quickly followed up by a goal from, of course, Christy Cranny. That then opened up the floodgates for an incredible victory on our Champions League debut as Christy Cranny scored a hat-trick and Fuller rounded off the game with his second. We then won 4-0 in the second leg for a huge 10-0 win on aggregate. Next up, we have Astana from Kazakhstan. And as we welcome them to Wales, we scored a penalty to take a lead and then doubled it from a corner to win the match 2-0. But in Kazakhstan, Astana took the lead to put us on the edge. Fortunately, we scored a banger from a free kick late on, but 10 minutes from time, Astana scored again. It led to a nervy final 10 minutes, but luckily our defense held strong and we just won 3-2. But surely we won't be able to beat Malmo. Well, in the first leg in Sweden, we took the lead early on. It took Malmo until the second half to equalize, but not long after that, we took the lead again. But Malmo just would not give up, and they saved their skin by scoring late on to draw the match 2-2. Back in Wales, we had a disaster. Malmo scored in the 22nd minute from a free kick. Then, less than 60 seconds later, Jaden Fuller was given a straight red card for a horror challenge. Then, just before half-time, Nathan Carlyon was given a second yellow card, dropping us down to nine men, which obviously allowed Malmo to score again and win the tie. But there is a silver lining. If we get knocked out of the Champions League at this phase, we get dropped down into the Europa League. Win that final qualifying round and we're in the Europa League, lose it and we go to the Conference League League phase. So no matter what happens, we have achieved our second long-term objective way earlier than expected. And I think we actually do have a chance of qualifying for the Europa League, as we've been drawn against Valor Reykjavik from Iceland. In Iceland, Valor took the lead 75 minutes into the game, but of course, we never give up. And moments later, we went to the other end of the pitch and scored an equaliser before being given a penalty to end up 2-1 winners on the night. Then in Wales, we opened up the scoring just before the half hour mark and then scored a second to give us a huge 4-1 lead in aggregate. The Lord did pull one back, but it wasn't enough. We've actually gone and qualified for the Europa League league phase. Although I do think we have been very fortunate with the teams we've been drawn against. Interestingly, we made more money from our two qualifying rounds in the Conference League last season than the Champions League this season. But we have just been handed three million pounds for the Europa League. So now we have money, the board do agree to become a fully professional club next season, as well as upgrade our training and youth facilities. This club is going places. Malmo lost in the final Champions League qualifying round, which means we actually play them again in the Europa League. But they might be the only team we end up picking up points against. So after a goalless draw against the Swedes, we did surprise ourselves by beating Panathinaikos from Greece, taking a 3-0 lead before the Greeks pulled one back late in the game. So maybe we do actually have a chance in the Europa League. Or not because we lost our other six games which i guess was expected but we didn't quite finish rock bottom we came 32nd out of 36. my big concern was that all the european games would affect us in the league but i wasn't to worry as we actually stay on top of the table when the league splits in half around the same time as our final europa league league phase games importantly we did beat tns but ended up losing to Cardiff Met University, who had an outside shot of the title as they're four points behind us with five games to go. 
but in the end, they were too far behind to cause any issues. As we go back to back in Wales, where there has been a change in the competitive order, as TNS finished outside the top three for the first time since 2001. So heading into season eight, we are now a fully professional club and have the ability to scout all of Europe. But I forgot about Brexit so we can't really make too many foreign signings. In the Champions League first qualifying rounds, we beat a team whose name I simply can't pronounce, 3-0 at home and then 3-0 away. The final goal from our star summer signing, Simon Roger Kayembe, who was let go by Newcastle United over summer. They also let go of Adam Stevenson, who I think is gonna tear things up for us. But can they get the job done against AIK from Sweden? Well, we actually beat them at their place, but they took the lead in Wales, leading to the scores being level 2-2 at 90 minutes. Then in extra time, they scored another, but we never give up, making it 3-3 and we go to penalties. But despite our best efforts, Stevenson and Munro both missed theirs, allowing AIK to progress. So once again, we've been pushed down into the Europa League, where we now face Sarajevo. In Bosnia, we comfortably won 2-0 with goals from Stevenson and Liam Brown. And then we also won 2-0 in Wales, meaning we're going to the final round of Europa League qualifying, but we have to take on Sheriff from Moldova, who are very good. However, in Moldova, we scored the only goal of the game to come back to Wales 1-0 winners. But despite Sheriff beating us in Wales, we managed to qualify for the Europa League on penalties. And this season, I feel like we've had a kinder draw than before. Despite going 1-0 down away at Molda, we did score twice late on to get ourselves a win early into the competition. But of course, we then got battered by almost everyone else again. Once again, finishing in 32nd place. But we may well have the chance to do it again next season, as we are currently top of the Welsh League. However, things didn't really go well. We lost to TNS, Lanelli Town, Haverford West, and Aberystwyth Town to drop into second place, eight points behind title winners TNS. So it's the conference league for us next season. But whilst every season our squad turnover is absolutely huge as we aim to improve, Christy Cranny is our longest serving player because he's the top scorer every single season. In season nine, we're pushing a defensive midfielder further forward to have a more traditional 4-3-3, which will hopefully help us beat UE Santa Coloma from Andorra in the conference league. It turns out Andorran clubs aren't very good. So maybe that's a challenge for us to do in the future. Let me know if you want to see that by uh, subscribing and liking the video. Despite taking the lead against Shelbourne from Ireland in the second qualifying round, they fought back to win the first leg 2-1. Is this our European adventure over for the season already? Thankfully not, as we battered them away from home. But Dutch side Utrecht might just be a step too far. However, in the Netherlands, despite going 1-0 down, we scored twice in the final 10 minutes to take the slenderest of margins back to Wales. And at home, we managed to hold off the Dutch to earn a 1-1 draw and reach the final qualifying round. But now, our European adventure this season is about to come to an end. Manchester United. I love the 14% of absolute blind optimism. However, at Old Trafford, we actually held the Red Devils to a 0-0 draw. Could we be about to cause an upset? Nope, not at all. But we did way better than I was expecting. So now we're knocked out of European competition, our main focus this season is actually on the league. However, at this stage, as you would expect, we are dominant. Although we did have a slight blip in October, we soon got back to winning ways. But we're only one point ahead of Connors Key, who have had a remarkable season. So we had to put a stop to that by beating them 2-0 in the second phase of the season to beat them to the top of the table by five points to win our third league title. So next season, we are back in the Champions League. We're also using all of our European money to keep upgrading our facilities that are on their way to an okay level. But also, because we have more money than we know what to do with, we have a mental transfer budget. So I spent one million pounds on one player. Robert McCansby arrived from Aberdeen and is by far our best player. 
we also did massively overpay for him. But that's because the board want us to reach the knockout stages of a European competition this season. So he better help us get past Riga in the Champions League. In the first leg in Wales, we put them to the sword and scored four goals without reply to give ourselves the best chance of making the second qualifying round. A 1-1 draw in Latvia means we do progress. But up next, we have FC Copenhagen, who beat us 1-0 in the first leg at Parken. Then when they travelled to Wales, they scored first to double their lead. Annoyingly, they then scored an almost identical goal to make it 3-0. But we never give up. We fought our way back into the game, only for Copenhagen to score a third goal from a corner. We did score a second late on, but it was too little, too late. The loss dropped us into the Europa League third qualifying round against Bodo Glimt. A winnable game in my opinion. At home we saw out a 1-1 draw against the Norwegians, who scored late on to equalise. But in Norway, we took the advantage inside of 6 minutes and never looked back doubling our lead 15 minutes later and adding a third just before half time. Bodo Glimp then scored either side of half time to make us feel a little bit nervous. But we finished in style to win 5-3 on aggregate. And in the final qualifying round, we've been given a very kind draw in Coca-Cola from Finland. A 3-0 win at home and a 5-1 win away ensures we make the Europa League league phase. And it's our best draw yet. If we're going to progress to the knockouts, surely it's going to be this season. But we didn't have the ideal start as we drew in Austria. We also lost against Galatasaray, which was expected. But we did think we'd be able to beat Sarajevo, so losing to them was a shock. However, we scored twice past Nicosia to beat the Cypriots 2-1 away from home. We also managed to beat Norwegian side Viborg 2-1 thanks to two goals inside the first 20 minutes. And then we just beat Hearts 1-0 thanks to them scoring an own goal in the 95th minute of play, a real lifeline. So this leaves us 13th in the table with two games to play, but they're tough. However, we pulled off a miracle draw away at Napoli, which made the 3-1 loss to Frankfurt bearable making us one of the 24 teams to qualify for the knockout stages, completing this season's challenge. However, the challenger Fiorentina might prove to be too much, as we gifted them a goal early on. And had they not scored their second, I'm pretty sure the referee would have given a penalty. But we did give ourselves a chance by scoring in the 88th minute to make sure we were only one goal behind going into the second leg where we did take the lead to level the scores. But on the night, Fiorentina were just too strong for us. They scored a goal to equalize and we lost 3-2 on aggregate. But we are making progress. And we can start it all again next season in the Champions League. So heading into season 11, we've been drawn against Lincoln Red Imps from Gibraltar in the Champions League. A 3-0 win at home and a win by the same scoreline away saw us through comfortably. We then welcomed Bulgarian side Botev Plovdiv to Wales, who we comfortably beat 2-0. This then meant a 1-1 draw in Bulgaria was enough for us to progress. Now we take on Maribor from Slovenia in the third qualifying round, the furthest we've been in the Champions League. In Slovenia, we scored three times without reply to take a huge advantage back to Wales, where we never looked like we were going to give away the aggregate lead, despite the scoreline on the night. So now, if we beat Slavia Prague, we will be in the Champions League proper. Our new left-back, Marcel de Silva, scored 11 minutes into the first leg. Then, straight from the kickoff, less than 60 seconds later, Slavia Prague brought the ball down the right-hand side of their attack. And Marcel de Silva saw red. He went in with two feet and then saw red again as he got himself sent off. But somehow that didn't stop us as we ended up keeping a clean sheet and even doubled our lead winning 2-0 on the night. When they came to our place, we did the exact same again. Controlling the game, picking our moments well, winning 2-0 on the night, 4-0 on aggregate, and we've reached the Champions League league phase. If we're lucky, we might just be able to pick up a few points against the teams we've been drawn against. Now, I'll be honest, I'd rather be in the Europa League or the Conference League, because I think we've got a much better chance of winning those competitions. But 
I am not going to say no to the money. We've made 13 million pounds from just qualifying giving us 18 million in the bank account. We managed to boost our bank balance even more as we beat Astana 1-0 at home. And then surprisingly, we put three goals past PSV away from home without reply to record arguably our most impressive win of the entire video. But maybe even more impressive were our draws at Real Madrid and Manchester United. It's not like either of these two sides played us off the pitch. We held our own. And as a result, we sneak through into the knockout rounds in the final qualification spot. So in the playoff knockout round, we'd been drawn against Marseille and we actually took the lead. But moments later, the French pulled one back to draw the match. Then they dominated the second leg in the south of France and knocked us out. I don't really mind though, because we've now made 28 million pounds this season from the Champions League. Once again, we dominated the league table for our fifth total and third title in a row. The league now also has a Europa League spot rather than three Conference League spots as the coefficient of the league increases, thanks to us. So to kick off season 12, we're once again against Lincoln Redims. And once again, we decimated the side from Gibraltar. This then put us up against Key Klaxvig of the Faroe Islands, who we also got past pretty easily. However, in the third qualifying round, Danish side Midtjylland took an early lead. But we did fight back, scored two of our own, and took the lead ourselves. But it turns out the Danes wanted it more, as they scored twice, either side of half time, to win the game 3-2. And then despite our best efforts, we just couldn't score in the second leg and were knocked down into the Europa League. Here, we've been drawn against Norwegian side Molder. And the story was the exact same as our previous match. Molder took the lead, but then we scored twice to put ourselves in front. And then in the second half, Molder scored twice themselves to win the first leg 3-2. Then in Wales, they took an early lead to extend their winning margin. We did level it up on the night through a penalty, but we couldn't do any more. We've just been knocked out of the Europa League. So for the first time in the video, we dropped down into the Conference League league phase. And if we can get results against Union Berlin and Lille, we might have a shot of going far. In our first game, we spanked Dunstrader 5-1 at home. We then travelled to Switzerland and beat Zurich 3-0 to add three more points. However, Union Berlin did beat us 3-2, scoring a penalty and a 93rd minute winner to deny us a point. But we then got back to winning ways against Kasim Pasha in Turkey, before absolutely destroying Lille 4-0 at home. A result that really took me by surprise and then gave us the momentum we needed to beat Serbian side Vojvodina to end our league phase campaign with five wins and one loss, putting us in an incredible second place in the table. Although we are level on points with Derry City, so I'm not actually sure how impressive that actually is. If we can avoid the stronger teams in the knockout stages, we might just have a good chance of reaching the final. As we finish in the top eight, we skip the knockout rounds and go straight through to the round of 16, where we face Austria Klagenfurt. We took the lead in Austria, but the home side were the better team on the night. They put us under pressure all match and finally made a breakthrough in the 61st minute, and then three minutes later, doubling their lead to win the first leg 2-1. But then things flipped around in the second leg, and at home, we were the far better side, making it 2-2 on aggregate in the 71st minute. But just as it looked like we were going to extra time, we scored not one, but twice in added time to win 3-0 on the night and reach the quarterfinals, where remarkably, we've been drawn against Derry City from Ireland. It feels incredible to me that there's going to be either a Welsh or an Irish side in the semi-finals of a European competition. However, in the first leg, we fell victim to what seems to be an incredible Derry side, as they beat us 1-0. Fortunately, we equalized early into the second leg, only for Derry to score minutes later to take the aggregate lead again. I swear, if we've come this far to get knocked out by Derry City, I, I might cry. But 35 minutes in, the Derry keeper spilled a shot, which allowed us to get back on level terms and then take the lead early in the second half. 
Then we really got into our stride as we scored a fourth goal. Derry did get themselves another, but it was okay. Because Archie Christie Cranny, who by now is a backup player, but still comes on sometimes, scored two more goals to complete his hat-trick on the night and win 6-3 on aggregate. The best part is, we've managed to avoid Valencia and Manchester United, as we've been drawn against Hibs in the semi-finals. Also, it is worth pointing out, at this stage of the season, the Welsh League has now actually finished. Obviously, we dominated and won another league title. But the only football we have now is in Europe. So if we do manage to beat Hibs, we are going to have to schedule some friendlies to make sure we stay match sharp for the final. The first leg was a quiet affair, with the only real chance coming in the 88th minute, which we managed to score, giving us a slender lead. And the second leg was going the same way, until Hibs scored in the 83rd minute to make it 1-1 on aggregate, taking us to extra time, where immediately Archie Christie Cranny scored to give us the lead again. This allowed us to find an extra gear, as Kayembe scored one and then scored another to give us an almighty 4-1 lead on aggregate. Hibbs did score again, but it was too little, too late. We won the game and we've reached the Europa Conference League final. We did manage to schedule a few friendlies against Belgian sides before the final to give us a test and keep us sharp. So now we take on Valencia in the Conference League final in a David versus Goliath challenge. Win this and we complete the video. But for all the hype of the match, the first 30 minutes of the game yielded zero chances for either side as nothing really happened. The first highlight of the game saw us break down the right-hand side of the pitch, with Monroe who spun around his man. He found Sant arriving in the area, who saw Jake Jones and opened up the scoring, giving us the lead at half-time after an incredibly cagey first half. And so we started to get excited, as the second half was going by in a very similar way. There just wasn't a single highlight. So I tried to protect the lead by slowing the game down and taking all energy out of it, which did work until the 88th minute. I can't believe we've bottled it so late on. Wait, it's going to VAR. <gasps> it was offside. We still have a chance. Look how marginal that call was. And so as the clock ticked down, time ran out for Valencia. Against the odds and the run of play, we've won ourselves the Europa Conference League, completing the final challenge and fully rebuilding the worst team in the UK. If you enjoyed that, why not subscribe to the channel? There's plenty more where that came from including this video where I received a mystery football shirt box and it gave me a challenge. And boy, was this challenge tough. You do not want to miss it.